Hi everyone, welcome to Sally's Backyard. I'm Sally. Um, if you are new, thanks for joining me. If you've been with me for a little while, thanks for coming back. Um, it's mid-March and spring is finding its way to us. Um, we did have a little snow over the weekend and some really cold temperatures, but I think we're on the upswing now. I do have uh, some crochet and some knitting and uh, I want to show you my seeds came in the mail. I want to show you what I've got because uh, uh, probably a few weeks here, eh, maybe a month, <laughs> I'll be getting ready to plant some seeds. Um, so yeah, let's get started. It's been a while since I've taken a walk in the back of our property, so I thought I would do that today and share it with you. I also wanted to mention uh, how much I appreciate your comments on my videos. Um, it does help to keep me motivated, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for that. So enjoy the walk. Last episode, I was talking about the new um, dishcloth in the uh, kitchen sink shops, uh, knit along, year long knit along for dishcloths. Um, and this is Emily's garden dishcloth. And I have made some progress on this. I haven't finished it yet, but I've made some progress. So I will show you that. Um, this is Lily Sugar and Cream yarn, and I believe this colorway is sage. Um, so I have started this and she's basing all of these patterns on her favorite books. And this is based on, uh, the Emily series by Lucy Maud Montgomery, who also wrote Anne of Green Gables. Um, when she gave the hint for this one for March, I thought it was going to be Anne of Green Gables, <laughs> but it is Emily. I have not read the Emily books, but it's got just this cute little detail along the edge, um, so I'm almost finished with that. I've just got a couple of repeats to go. So I'm working on that. And I'm using size uh, US4 needles. And uh, yeah, I'm just kind of taking my time with it and it's coming along just fine. <laughs> As I always do, I will link uh, in the description box to all of the things that I'm working on or anything that I mention. Um, so you can find information for that. Um, the other thing I've been working on is the Hotel of Bees shawl. This is a pattern by Christina Hattering. Um, I am using Knit Picks Bear yarn uh, that I dyed, oh, I don't know, a few years ago, at least three or four years ago um, with natural dyes. Um, I used uh, coneflower and black eyed Susans, walnuts, onion skins. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so let me show you my progress. Um, I will say this isn't a hard pattern, but you do have to pay attention and you do have to pay attention to your, your stitch count. Um, and a couple of times I didn't, um, I've made this before. I made one of these before about five years ago. Um, but if you don't pay attention to your stitch count, you're going to be off and you, you just really have to pay attention because each section really feeds into the next. Um, so I had to rip out a few rows, um, and, uh, get back on track on a few things, but I am now on section two. So I will show you that I, um, have gotten this far. So... You can see the honeycomb section here. I ran out of the yellow. Uh, this Oh, marigold, that was the other color that I used to dye. <laughs> um, and I had to start uh, the green, which is the coneflower and black eyed Susans. Um, but I think it's so pretty. I love these natural colors. 
They're so much fun to work with. And this, this yarn, yarn is 100% uh, Peruvian Highland wool. So let me show you a little bit. Um, this is the first section and you can see the little wings and the yellow is the marigold. For the wings section and some of this other uh, contrast color, um, I'm using a yarn uh, that I got from Checkered Flag Fibers and that's a local alpaca farm. Um, it's about five minutes from here. I've never been to her farm, um, but I have been to her shop, which is in downtown Springfield, Ohio. Um, and I would love to go visit her farm. I really need to make an appointment and go down there and get some of that on video for you. That's something I'm thinking about uh, for this summer. Um, but anyway, I bought some of her bear yarn and I dyed it with uh, onion skins and walnuts and I got like this honey colored um, yarn. And then of course the yellow for the marigold. And then the green is the uh, coneflower and black eyed Susans. So yeah, and then I have one color left that I haven't included uh, just yet. It'll be for section three, and that's the black walnut. So three of the skeins are uh, Knit Picks Bear, and then I'm um, using the one skein of Alpaca Wool Blend from Checkered Flag. So this is where I'm at, and I'm using a G hook, size four millimeter. And yeah, so that's where I'm at on this. I'm really enjoying it. Sometimes it's nice to have something to really pay attention to. It just gets your mind off of everything else. Um, so I'm really happy with how that's turning out. And I have one other um, project that I'm gonna be starting. So I may have to set uh, the shawl and the uh, washcloth aside for just a few days, cause I don't think it'll take me that long. And let me show you that. One of my daughter's uh, friends is pregnant and she is due in April, I believe, April or May. Um, so my daughter contacted me a couple of weeks ago and said, hey mom, <laughs> could you crochet something for the baby for me? And I said, of course, <laughs> whenever the kids ask, I'm always happy uh, to do that. Um, so I am going to be making the Cuddly Dinosaur Comforter. And I will put a picture of that here. It's really cute. And the designer is Olive's Toy Box. Um, so I went ahead and got the yarn, which I will show you. Um, and uh, yeah, let me get that. This pattern calls for a DK weight yarn and a G hook, uh, size 4.0 millimeters. Um, so yeah, let me show you the yarn. I ordered uh, this yarn from lovecraft.com. And I have ordered from them before, um, and I've had really good luck. Um, it was here in just a matter of a few days. Let me show you what I got. So this is called Flutterby Chunky. And this is the, well, the color is B11, um, but it's a mint green and it's really soft. So it's a chenille yarn, which I haven't worked with before, but I think this will be really cute. This will be for the body uh, and the head of the dinosaur. <laughs> and then for his um, other parts of the dinosaur um, that require some color, I don't know what those are called. Those little the scales, they're not scales. I don't know, you know what I mean. <laughs> those parts that stick up on the back of the dinosaur, if anybody knows what those are called, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> My brain is not, yeah, anyway. Um, this is uh, paint box yarns, and this is Simply DK, and these are all acrylic. Um, I think with babies, that's just the way to go. Um, they're washable, they're dryable, you know, they drool, spit up, whatever. You can just throw it in the washing machine, it's just the easiest. Um, and uh, also, these are the exact yarns that the pattern called for. I picked out, I picked out some different uh, colors um, than she had, but it's the same brand. So paint box yarn, Simply DK, and this is color 121, and it's kind of a daffodil yellow. I think that's really cute. And then the other one is same yarn. This is color 155, and this is kind of a peachy pink color. And uh, this is denim blue which is color 63. I think that's really pretty. 
And then there is this uh, lavender purple color, color number 146. So, that. and then the last one is for um, the head. I think I said this one was for the body and the head. This is just for the body. Um, so for the head, I got this uh, kind of a sage green color for the dinosaur head. Um, so yeah, I think those will be really cute together. All the colors and then this color for the body. So I think that's going to be super cute. Uh, I can't wait to get started on it. And uh, I think I think my daughter will be happy with it. And I think her friend will like it for her her baby. So I'm going to be working on that uh, probably. Uh, I need to start that actually here in the next day or so. Um, so I'll put my other projects aside and get that finished. Um, one thing I will say, I uh, originally bought the pattern on Etsy um, on my phone. Um, and unfortunately, the Etsy app doesn't allow you access to uh, your digital files from your from the app. You have to go to the website, which is kind of a pain. So. <laughs> Um, I didn't know that and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't access the pattern from my phone. So I bought the pattern again on Ravelry. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things. I supported a designer twice. Okay, whatever. Um, that's fine. Not a big deal. Um, so I bought it on Ravelry, which then uh, the PDF automatically goes into your Ravel Ravelry library, which is so much more convenient. Um, than having to go to the Etsy website every time you want to access um, the pattern. Um, once I figured out that I could get it from the Etsy website, I had already purchased it from Ravelry because I thought there was a problem. So not a problem. It's just a glitch with the Etsy app. So keep that in mind, um, not to discourage anyone from buying patterns from Etsy, um, but just know that the app uh, doesn't have the capability uh, to allow you to access your patterns um, from from the app. So you have to go to the website. <laughs> I have so many things that I want to work on uh, right now, so many things I want to start, um, but I'm really just trying to uh, keep focused and uh, finish the things that I've already got in progress. Um, I do have uh, some projects that I want to work on during the spring and summer, and I have the perfect weight yarns for those. Um, so I'm looking forward to sharing those with you in the future. I want to show you um, the seeds that I ordered, um, but before I do that, uh, I was going to show you um, where I am going to plant those seeds. So when we first moved to this property uh, 16 years ago, um, I had a garden bed here and here. Hi, Riley. <laughs> and then I had um, a bed here and here. And then we have these two beds uh, that are left. Um, so we took these out uh, quite a few years ago. You can see the grass is already recovered and all of that. And then last uh, season, we took out these two beds. And this year, um, we're going to take out these two. Um, they're filled with oregano, um, but I can grow those in pots. Uh, I can grow that in pots very easily. Um, the problem that we have is that the rabbits like to nest in here. And, and that, of course, attracts Riley. And it's kind of this constant battle of keeping him out of these beds and keeping the rabbits out. Um, so we're going to take these when out. When we too. first moved in, um, both of my daughters were still living at home. Um, they were in high school. Um, so having a larger garden was practical for us. Um, you know, we were all eating from it. Um, but now that it's just my husband and I, um, we don't really need that much garden space. Um, I grow most of my uh, plants in containers now, and we have a local farmer's market that I just love to visit, and that fills in the gaps. That is our bluebird house, and I'm sure you can hear the bluebirds. They are not happy that I'm out here right now. Um, but we do have a nesting pair and they've been here for about three or four years now. Um, but yeah, they're a lot of fun to watch. So this is where I do uh, my gardening now. Uh, my husband built that pallet planter for me last year and I'm hoping that he makes me another one this year because they're great for um, lettuces and things like that. 
Um, and then I have my other pots over here. Of course, all this has to be cleaned up. And so I have my herbs uh, in these two little pots. And then I usually put a tomato in here. And then I've got a few other um, pots over there. So once the weather warms up a little bit, um, I'll start getting everything cleaned up out here and ready to go. And yeah, the birds are really happy today. <laughs> That's one of the things I love about this property. Um, when we first moved in here, the back portion of our property uh, was all grass, all the way back to the uh, farmer's field behind us. And we mowed it for a few years and just decided that, you know, this is such a waste of our time and of our gas for the mower um, that we decided to let it naturalize and grow up. And we use it now. I walk back there, uh, the birds love it. Um, I ran into a little possum last year when I was walking <laughs> um, and we have had deer come through. Um, so yeah, it seems, uh, seems to be of much better use now that we've just let it go. So I switched it up this year. I usually order from uh, John Sheeper's Kitchen Seeds um, for my seeds, but since Baker Creek was having a fundraiser for Ukraine, um, this year I ordered from Baker Heirloom Seeds. And I was amazed at how quickly these got here, uh, just in a few days. Um, so let me show you what I purchased. Um, so I got some uh, carrots and I got some snapdragons, which is one of my favorites. My mom always grew these. I got um, three varieties of nasturtium, which is one of my favorite flowers. This is cherry rose jewel and tip top Alaska salmon. I love salmon colored flowers and a tall trailing mix, which I'll put along the fence uh, over by our little wagon. Uh, I also got some cilantro and some zinnias. I love to grow flowers. <laughs> um, some cosmos. And what else? Oh, I got a small variety of peas, Tom Thumb peas that I can grow in a container, which will be perfect. Um, I got some basil. And then they sent me, oh, and then I have uh, two varieties of sunflowers, which are my favorite flower. Um, these are gold ring and these are called Henry Wild. And they sent me two free uh, seed packets. Uh, they sent me some cucumbers and they sent me some elephant dill. <laughs> so I will have those uh, as well to plant. Um, so I will keep you updated as the days get warmer and it gets closer to that time to plant. Uh, I'll be sharing all that with you. I do have uh, some other seeds left over from last year that I need to go through, but I know I have um, radish and lettuce seeds that are still viable um, in my stash um, and a few other things um, that I need to uh, look through. <laughs> there is one more thing I want to show you uh, before I wrap up today. Um, my husband uh, does metal work and he does a lot of um, figural items. Um, he's made trees and dogs and actors and trains and all sorts of things uh, that he makes out of metal. Um, we used to set up at shows and he would sell his pieces. Um, so this past week, um, he made me something I want to show you. It's a little miniature dog. <laughs> so yeah, he made this for me and welded it up. And he actually did a video himself um, of how he made this. And I'll put a link to that uh, in the description box if you wanna go to his uh, YouTube page. And you can see how he put this together. So cute. And I'll put a few more pictures here um, of some of the other things that he's made uh, in the past. Um, but I just thought this was so cute and he made it so that if I want to, I can put a crochet hook in there. <laughs> I just thought that was so cute. I wanted to share that um, with all of you. So I'm going to wrap up uh, this week's podcast here. Um, I just want to thank you all for joining me. Uh, I hope you're all staying safe. I hope you're well. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to spring. 
You can find me on Instagram as at Sally's Backyard, um, and you can find me on Ravelry as Crochetster. Uh, so yeah, thanks for joining me, and I will see you all again next time. Bye, everybody.